Welcome back to series five of Step Up Your Practice. In this series, we're talking all about different recording techniques used in Studio One. So let's get started. The first of which is the recording technique of where you place your M7 microphone. A lot of people, when they practice, put the microphone right in front of their bell and play. Now, whether you're playing a brass instrument that's bell front or a woodwind instrument where the sound sort of goes everywhere, or a stringed instrument, or a guitar bass with an amp that you're trying to record, remember that your listeners and your audience are never going to be a foot from your bell. So sometimes for rehearsal points, I like to record from across the room, from different places in the room, facing in different directions, especially when it comes to articulation. Because what I hear with my ears behind the bell of what I'm articulating is not the same that sounds 10, 15 feet away or in a concert hall 40 or 50 feet away. So sometimes it's great to get the microphone far away so you can hear what you actually sound like from a listener's perspective. Now, second point, using Studio One, we're going to talk about recording ourselves and playing back at different tempos. Again, what we think we sound like when we're playing really fast is not always the case when it's played back slower. And this was the biggest, most eye-opening thing for me as a young musician. The first time I heard myself played back at half tempo, I was blown away at how many mistakes I could hear that I couldn't hear when I was playing too fast. So let me show you how to make that work. In Studio One, I have my audio box template already set up. I'm recording on track one. My metronome is in 4-4. Of course, I got my pre-count on and I'm at 120 beats per minute. So I'm gonna grab my headphones and I'm just gonna play a basic articulation exercise and show you how this works. Every trumpet player should know that one. So, I'm looking at my articulations. The first thing I'm looking for is consistent shapes, right? And this actually looks pretty good. Notice this note didn't come out quite as strong as the other two, so we can always listen back and hear what happened there. So, let me show you how to slow this down. Like we did with transposing our backing tracks, in the inspector, we can adjust the file tempo. First thing I want to check is that the file tempo matches the tempo of the Studio One song, which it does. And it looks like up here, we're already set to time stretch. You can set to not follow, but time stretch is where you want to be. Because this is activated, what we can do is we can simply change the tempo here and it will adjust the audio with me. So I'm going to take this and actually take it all the way down to 60, which is half tempo. Notice it stretches everything out for me and listen to what we hear now. So it's a much different experience. Let me show you what most students that you'll hear from yourself when any wind instrument when you're articulating. I'm going to go back to 120 and I'm going to record real quick and sort of demonstrate what I hear most of the time from young instrumentalists. That's pretty common, so what you may not hear fast, when I slow it down, you'll notice that a lot of times we get these little scoops in the sound, and you'll hear the pitch really obvious now. You hear that little scoop in the sound where it's not very clear? That's what we want to avoid. Remember, from the previous lessons, you can always go in and put your tuner on this as well and watch the tuner dance around a little bit. As you play back. So, in that case, you can play slow or fast. The other thing I like to do, when I'm practicing an exercise really slow, and I know I'm going to work it up to a faster tempo, what happens is when we play something slow, the articulation and style tends to change, and then when we speed it back up again, all of a sudden we have to rethink about how we articulate that passage. 
uh, especially when you're playing fast short notes because when we play fast and short we want to be really light which gives us the speed when we're practicing something like that at a slower tempo we tend to just be real heavy because we can and we're slow so what I like to do is when I play something slow I like to go back in Studio One and play it back faster to hear what that articulation that I'm using at the slow tempo sounds like at a fast tempo to make sure I'm mirroring that so when I get it up to the speed I want I don't have to completely rethink about how I'm tonguing that passage. Now the other cool thing you can do in Studio One which I do a lot is you can actually play duets with yourself and this is really fun so what I'm going to do is pull out this jazz duet book and I'm going to show you how to set up how we can play a duet and record with ourselves tuning to ourselves playing in time blending and all the things we want to practice but we're just one person practicing at home so let's get this set up we're going to come over here to our studio one and we're just going to delete these files now I'm playing jazz and one of the things that I'm looking for when I play a jazz passage is that I'm trying to get strong emphasis on two and four. So I'm actually going to reconfigure my metronome a little bit here to get a more jazz feel. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change it from 4-4 four, four to 2-4. Then I'm going to switch the accent to beats two and four. So it defaults to having the accent beat on the first beat of the measure. Well, I'm just going to switch that to metronome one and I'm going to put the clave, which is the higher click, on the beat and I'm going to change the tempos. So now, it starts on beat one, but it gives me this two and four accent. And we're actually going to speed it back up to 120, which would make it a little easier. So, using that with my pre-count, I'm going to go ahead and record the, uh, the second part of this duet. You can do the first part or the second part. I prefer to do the second part, especially because this one, the second player, starts in the beginning. So there's a pickup note on this one. So what I'm going to do is actually use a pre-roll, and I'm going to start around measure two. It doesn't matter where I start as long as the duet lines up. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and get this recording right now. So I have that part recorded, I'm going to go back to the same place, I'm going to now, on a separate track, I'm going to record, and I'm going to record right along with myself. Cool. So now I have a duet. I'll go ahead and just take the metronome off. And I can, of course, mix the parts here. And let's see, here what we have. So, lots of cool stuff there. The last thing I want to show you is recording takes in layers. This is something you can do in Studio One so you can practice doing the same take over and over and over again without having to run and stop the recording. So I'm going to go back to a different passage here. I'm going to show you how this works. Let's just get rid of our masterpiece here. We don't need two tracks to do this. So I'm going to set this track up to record. Now I'm going to go up into options and I'm going to tell Studio One to record takes two layers. Now in order to do this, I need to set up a loop. So I'm going to give myself uh, about five measures just in case. Let's go ahead and get our metronome back to normal here. So we're actually going to switch this back to where it was. Now what's going to happen is as I loop this, Studio One's going to automatically repeat this loop 
and it's going to record a different take every time. So a lot of times when I play a passage, I want to play it three or four times in a row and try to play it exactly the same way, but I don't want to have to interrupt by stopping, hit record, rewind, play again, and all of that. So I can actually just work this passage at any tempo I want. I'm going to take the tempo up just a little bit, and let's see where we are. Let me go ahead and do a all through all the way through measure six. So we have some time to regroup between takes. So I'll show you how this works. Now I can go on and on. Notice as soon as I'm done, I get three whole takes of this. So I can listen to my first take, my second take, or my third take. You have options. Now the other cool thing I can do, is let's say I'm doing some recording and I want to see what it would sound like if I made the perfect take. We would never do this to an audition CD and make us sound like we played it perfectly. We'd always record in one take. However, if we were going to edit pieces together, this is an easy way to do it. So notice, all I have to do is highlight the section of each take that I want. So I'll show you how this works. Let's say I want to, the first few notes of this take went really well, but I like the way this take went from here to here, but maybe I want to catch these 16th notes. Let's drag this over a little more of the last take. But let's say I like the last note of the first take better. All I'm doing, actually we're just going to zoom in a little more here and connect these better. All I'm doing is I'm highlighting where I want it to fade. And notice Studio One is doing all the cross fading for me. So now what we'll hear is the beginning of the first take, the middle of the second take, the last part of the third take, but the last note. You can easily edit all of your takes together. Pretty cool. So some great recording tips for using Studio One. Join me in the next series where we actually get into the composition side of using Notion and our PS49 in the music creation suite.